So I'm not really going to get into any tutorials specifically today, guys. I just want to share my enthusiasm with you for my rack. I want to show you some things about my rack so that you can make the decision for yourself if this is a rabbit hole that you would like to go down. Electronic Sounds Audio, the YouTube channel for you. Hey, what's happening guys? It's Dean from Electronic Sounds. Stick around. Today I'm going to introduce you to my favorite Black Friday purchase. This is my rack. It's a Euro rack style synthesizer on iPad. It's amazing. Come on guys, let's get into this. My rack is a complete modular system, guys. It comes with about 500 modules right now, and it's very, very deep. The things that you can do with this are just about limitless and limited only by your own imagination. I'm just going to do a basic overview and introduction to this today. We're not going to go super deep into tutorials, and I also want to state right off the jump that I'm not a modular expert, guys. This is just what I've discovered so far, and I'm going to share it with you because I think that my rack is really amazing. Come on guys, let's check it out. Okay, so what is a Eurorack style modular synthesizer anyway? It's basically an environment in which you can insert different modules for different components of synthesizers, drum machines, and sequencers, and you can combine those together using virtual cables to create different grooves and sounds. If you think of this like a giant Sonic Lego set or a giant Sonic Erector set, you're in the ballpark as to what this is actually capable of, guys. Here we've got a blank session loaded in my rack, and if I press the plus button at the top of the screen, it's going to get us into the browser where we can browse all of the included modules that come with my rack. All sorts of different um, oscillators and sequencers and filters and effects units. Some of these are based on real-world modular gear. For instance, this audible instrument section is based on the mutable instruments line of modular tools. This macro oscillator here is based on the mutable instruments braids oscillator. This one here is based on plates. This one here is based on uh, mutable instruments elements. We got tides. We got tides with the sheep firmware. We've got uh, class clouds, we've got rings, etc, etc, etc. And as you just start exploring these different modules, you'll see that you've got different sequencers, you've got, you know, different uh, visualizers, you've got different X, XY modules, you name it. These are all sorts of the components that you're going to be using to build your own sounds, your own synthesizers, your own custom sequences, guys. So this is the first project that I put together inside of my rack, and I'm going to play it for you guys in just one second. But what I want to do is I want to explain a little bit about how I put this together, because looking at this amount of wires and modules for the first time might be a little bit overwhelming. And it was a little bit overwhelming to learn some of these things. But you just put in the hours, and you just go slowly, and you just take it one step at a time. And it's very, very doable. What I did is I found a YouTube video where somebody was building a patch in my rack from scratch. And I'm gonna put a link to that exact video in the upper corner right here so you guys can check it out. I literally followed along and every time that gentleman connected a cable, I connected that cable. And I followed the steps that he was making and I you know, made the pattern my own as I put it together. And when his video ended, I just kept going and I kept adding new things based on the little design that I had put together. I find that once you get something going and you've got some sound coming out of my rack, it's a lot easier to add to that than it is to get going. So a strong suggestion for when you're just starting out and just learning is don't be afraid to watch somebody build a patch from scratch and pause their video and recreate what they're doing inside of my rack on your end. And that's definitely a good way to get started learning some of these connections.
something else that I really want to get across in this first video, guys, is just how small some of these knobs are and some of these devices are. And even as you use your fingers to pinch in, there's only a certain, you know, amount that you can zoom in. And I really find that this is one of those apps specifically that benefits from the Apple Pencil, which I know doesn't work with um, all the versions of the iPad, but I'm just saying, you know, these are pretty small controls and you definitely will benefit from a newer iPad and an Apple Pencil with an app like this, for sure. No question about it. Okay guys, there's quite a lot of information that I'd like to share with you guys regarding my rack and my first few days with it. I made a bunch of notes so that I wouldn't forget anything. I think that the very first and foremost thing that I want to let you know is that my rack requires you to be connected to the internet to use it. It saves all of its files and samples that you import into it into your iCloud account. So you're going to need to be connected to the internet when you want to use this app. It's going to back up all of your files to your iCloud account. That way you can download those files, back them up onto your laptop, onto your hard uh, drive onto your main computer or that you can share those with other people. So just keep in mind that that is a limitation. You're going to need to be connected to the internet for this to work. Um, I definitely think that this works best with the newer model iPads. You're going to need that CPU power if you want to start, you know, really exploring modular and not experience those, you know, cracks and pops that you get when you push the CPU too hard. I'm using um, a third generation 2018 12.9 inch uh, iPad Pro that I recently upgraded to. And while you can do a lot of amazing stuff, there's no question that you can very easily max a device like this out and start experiencing those clicks and those pops and the sound. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you're very much aware of that this is definitely, how many modules you can use will definitely be based on the power of your iPad. One more thought about the online situation, guys, and that is if you're going to be planning to import a whole lot of samples into this app as you make your projects, all of those samples are going to be stored in your iCloud account. So you're going to want to make sure that you've got, you know, enough storage in your iCloud account that you can hold the amount of samples you want to use. You might have noticed that as I've been playing you back these little examples today, guys, that when I press the play button, it doesn't actually start the groove on the downbeat, per se. And that's because I don't exactly know how to achieve that yet. I'm using these uh, modules here called clocks, which are sending a uh, MIDI clock signal out to my various sequencers. And there's some, uh, you know, holes here, CV holes here for things like reset and run and things like that. So if you know how that I can route this, so when I press the play button, it starts at the very downbeat. Please leave a note in the comments. I would love to figure that out. Thanks, guys. I think one of the things that keeps people from getting into modular, at least one of the things that was a barrier for me, is that it's such a steep learning curve. These are the individual building blocks of synthesizers, drum machines, and sequencers that we're connecting up ourselves via cables. You definitely have to have a quite a bit of know-how to connect those cables together, and there's no real simple and instant gratification way to get started with stuff like this that I have found so far. That's kind of where I'm gonna come in, guys. I'm gonna be the one 
who's going to get started, who's going to talk you through some very basic ideas here. I'm certainly not a modular expert, but I definitely have some things to show you that are going to help you get up and running and actually connecting up modules and making some sounds inside of my rack. I spent quite a few hours over the last few days getting familiar with this app, guys, and there's no way that I would be as far along in this journey as I am now without a little help from my friends. So I certainly want to give a big shout out to my buddy Gasm and a big shout out to my buddy Ray. Thanks a lot, you guys. I really appreciate your help getting me started with some of these concepts. Thanks, guys. Something else that really compounds to the steep learning curve in my rack and modular synthesis in general, guys, is the lack of a real, you know, basic global manual for this whole thing. There's no way that you can just sit down and read the manual, if you know what I'm saying. It, we're talking about approximately 500 uh, modules that are coming in my rack right now. And to understand all of those different modules that are made by different manufacturers for different purposes, it's going to take quite a bit of time, and there's no way to really encompass all of that in sort of one global manual. What you will find inside of MyRack is that when you double click on a module, some modules have a, an online manual, and that will lead you to their online manual. A lot of these modules have no manual at all, and you're kind of on your own. But a lot of these modules, you can actually look up the specific module on YouTube, or the real world module that the virtual module is based on, and you can do a lot of in-depth research on your own that way to find out what some of these more intricate and powerful modules are capable of. Without question, guys, my absolute favorite thing about my rack is the bang for the buck. These modules are not cheap. If you were to go out and invest in, say, 500 real-world modules, you're easily looking at a $100,000 or more investment. For $5, $10, $20, whatever you're paying for this app, I think the bang for the buck is literally off the charts immeasurable here as to what you're actually getting for your investment, guys. So what kind of things can you actually build inside of MyRack? Well, you can build complex synthesizers that you can play with your MIDI controllers or that you can sequence with your own MIDI sequencers or a MIDI sequencer inside of an app for the iPad like Alm. You can also build audio effects that you can run uh, other apps through inside of something like Alm. Or you can build uh, virtual drum machines and you can sequence those with the sequencers inside of MyRack or your own hardware sequencers. The limits are pretty much up to your own creation creative imagination, guys. I also want to talk about anomalies real quick, guys, because we usually experience those with apps at one point or another. And the main anomaly that I found with my rack so far is depending on what modules that you load, there's a chance that when you load your project again, you might get no audio. This has happened to me, and it also happened to a couple of the friends that I was testing this with and were helping me learn it, where they had built a project and then loaded up that project again and suddenly no sound from that project. And that is something that you're going to want to keep in mind, that there are going to be anomalies along the way. So far, the modules that I have identified that caused that problem for me were the cuts module. Once I put that module in my project and reloaded that project, I then got no audio audio coming out of that project and I removed the cuts module and suddenly there was audio again. Another one is I inserted the MIDI uh, controller, the MIDI CC module to this, and I routed all of the MIDI CCs so that my controller could be controlling the volumes on this mixer here and everything worked just fine. But when I reloaded the project that had that you know, MIDI controller and the assignments into it, no audio came out of the project. And I, re I had duplicated this before I tried to do that, so I loaded up the original, which plays just fine still. But as soon as I ran those MIDI assignments and had that module in, no audio came out of the project the next time I loaded it. So maybe those things will be helpful to note for the developer of this app. I had that issue specifically with the cuts module and also with the MIDI CC routing module. When I open a project with those modules in it, no sound comes out. 
So with this first MyRack video, guys, I'm trying to gauge how much interest there is or would be in tutorials from me on an app like this. So if you're interested in more, please leave a comment down below and let me know. Thanks for watching, guys.